So speaking about control systems, there are two main types of control systems, electrical control systems and mechanical control systems. So how do we create a mathematical model of mechanical control systems? Well, my name is Rishi Ramju and welcome to the Backbench Engineering Community where I make engineering easy for you. So let us ask ourselves that obvious question. How do we create a mathematical model of a mechanical control system? Well, let's find out. So a mechanical control system has got three main components. So it is these three main components that make a mechanical control system. So the first component of a mechanical control system is an object of particular mass m. That is a mass. This is a major key component of a mechanical system. So first one is mass. Then comes a damper. A damper is something that looks somewhat like this. So this is what you refer to as a damper. And now the third component is a spring. So these are the three components, the basic elemental components that make up a mechanical control system. So now with the help of these three components, there are two types of mechanical systems that can be made based on the motion of a particular object. First one is a translational mechanical system and the second one is a rotational mechanical system. The name itself is self-explanatory. Translational mechanical system is a system in which an object moves along a straight line whereas rotational mechanical system is a system in which an object moves in a circular path. That is it rotates along a circular path. As simple as that guys. So first let us see a translational mechanical system. So in a translational mechanical system what we observe is that a particular object moves along a straight line. It moves along a straight line and therefore as this object moves along a straight line it would have a particular displacement say x. So the unit of this particular displacement x is meters. So now as this object moves along this particular straight line the rate of change of displacement gives us the velocity. So therefore the velocity v is given as the rate of change of this particular displacement that is dx by dt and the unit of this velocity is given as meter per second. And now finally we have the rate of change of this particular velocity which is the acceleration of that particular object. So the acceleration is given as rate of change of velocity that is dv by dt but v is dx by dt so therefore this becomes d squared x by dd squared and the unit of acceleration is meter per second squared. So now with the help of these three we can find the force that is acting on the three elemental components of a particular translational mechanical system. So we all know for a fact that force F, the unit of force is Newton. So therefore if we are considering a particular mass say M then the force acting on this particular mass is given as F is equal to MA, basic 9th standard physics. So F is equal to MA, that is a force that would be acting on a particular mass that is displaced along a straight line. But now next if you are considering the case of a particular damper, if the damping coefficient of this particular damper is taken as B, then the force is given as F is equal to b into v where v is the velocity with which this particular damper is displaced. So therefore that is a force that is acting on a particular damper. And now if we consider a particular spring and let us assume that this particular spring has a spring constant say k then the force that is acting on that particular spring is given as f is equal to k into x where x is the displacement of that particular spring. So f is equal to kx. So this is the basic idea behind a translational mechanical system. As simple as that guys. So these are the main key components and the basic elemental idea of a translational mechanical control system. So it is with these ideas that we'd be creating a mathematical model of a translational mechanical system. 
as simple as that so next we have rotational mechanical system so in the case of a rotational mechanical system a particular object will be moving along a circular path like this so it would move along a circular path like this it would have a motion like this along a particular circular path with some particular point as the center of that particular circle so when an object moves along a circular path it is then we say that this is a rotational mechanical system so therefore just like what we saw in the case of a translational mechanical system here also we would have components that are equivalent to displacement velocity and acceleration so here instead of displacement what we take is angular displacement so here the angular displacement is what we take and it is represented by theta and the unit of angular displacement is radians that is if the object moves from here to this particular point here then this is the angular displacement theta so now, just like the velocity in translation motion, here we have angular velocity. So angular velocity is the rate at which this particular angular displacement changes. That is what you refer to as angular velocity. It is represented by omega. And therefore, angular velocity is given as d theta by dt and the unit of angular velocity is radians per second and now just like acceleration in translational motion here we have angular acceleration that is the rate of change of this particular angular velocity that is what you refer to as angular acceleration and this angular acceleration is represented by alpha which is given as the rate of change of angular velocity that is d omega by dt but omega is d theta by dt so this would be equal to d square theta by dt square and the unit of this is given as radians per second square so now it is with the help of these three components that we find the forces that are acting on the elemental components on a rotational mechanical system so here we need two more things so first one is the equivalent of force so here instead of force we have something referred to as torque which is represented by tau and the unit of torque is newton meters and next we have something referred to as moment of inertia and this is represented by i and this is the equivalent of mass in translational motion that is mass in translational motion is equivalent to moment of inertia in rotational motion so here the unit of moment of inertia is given as kilogram meter square so it is with the help of these that we would derive the torque that is present on these three components so here we are not considering force because the equivalent of force in rotational motion is torque so first let us find the torque that we see in the case of a mass m so in the case of a mass m the torque tau is given as i into alpha if it was translation motion it was m into a but here the equivalent of mass here is moment of inertia i and the equivalent of a here is angular acceleration alpha so therefore torque to is equal to i into alpha next if you are considering a particular damper of a damping constant b then the torque to is given as b into omega where b is the damping coefficient and omega is simply the angular velocity if it was translational motion it would have been b into v where v was the translational velocity but here we are taking omega which is the angular velocity and finally if you are taking a particular spring of a spring constant k then the torque that is present on that particular spring is given as torque tau is equal to k theta where k is the spring constant and theta is the angular displacement so this does is the basic concepts behind what you refer to as rotational mechanical system and it is with the help of these that we would find the mathematical modeling of rotational mechanical systems so in the next video we'll be implementing these concepts so that we can mathematically create a model of mechanical control systems so i hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what you refer to as translational and rotational mechanical systems and if you guys found this video informative please do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button we'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos so stay tuned stay subscribed until next time i'll see you guys in the next video thank you